Hey guys, my name is Sarah. Welcome back to Randall House Farms. The next episode in our Harvest Work series is going over pressure canning. So let's talk about pressure canning. Hold up, stop. I know you've heard the horror stories about exploding canners. It's never happened here, so have no fear. So pressure canning is very similar to water bath canning. However, there are some very key differences. Pressure canning is what you're going to use for those lower acidity foods that you cannot water bath can. The reason you can pressure can lower acidity foods is because the pressure canner heats your food up a lot more than a water bath canner ever would, therefore killing the bacteria botulism that you could have if you were to water bath can lower acidity food. Lower acidity foods that you're gonna to wanna to pressure can are things like potatoes, meats, stews, and green beans. Let's go over the different parts of a pressure canner. That way you'll know what I'm talking about as I refer to them. So this, the base part, is what I refer to as the canner. Then you have your lid. Your lid is what has the different instruments on it that make it a pressure canner. Within the lid you have a few different instruments. This is called the safety fuse. This pops up and down depending on if your pot is pressurized or not. This is your pressure gauge, which will read what your canner is processing at. This is called the vent port or the petcock. I'll wait for your laughter. <laughs> you also have your counterweight, which sits on top of the vent port or the petcock, which will make your pot come to pressure. Those are the different parts of your pressure canner. So for pressure canning, you're going to need all the same items that you would for water bath canning. You need your jars, you need your lids, you need your bands, you need all your utensils, your jar lifters, your headspace ruler if you choose to use that, and your funnel. The process is more or less the same as water bath canning. If you haven't watched that video, I'll link it up here so that way you can take a look at it. I highly recommend watching that video before you proceed with pressure canning. So you'll start out with the same process with pressure canning, you're gonna to wanna to sanitize your jars. With pressure canning, you can be a little bit more lenient. You could just wash them up with some hot soapy water. I still run them through the dishwasher because it's the easiest. I don't have to do any manual work if I can help it. What hugely differs is how you're going to fill your canner. You will never, under any circumstances, fill your pressure canner with enough water to cover your jars. Never, ever, ever, don't do it. Every pressure canner is different. Please read the directions that come with your pressure canner. However, most pressure canners you are safe by adding only two inches of water to the bottom of your pot. This is a 23 quart Presto pressure cooker. I know that the instructions indicate to me that I need to add three quarts or 12 cups of water to the bottom, no matter how many jars I'm processing. So once you've added the correct amount of water to the bottom of your pressure canner, you're gonna wanna get this heated. I just set this on the stove and then set the lid on top. I don't seal it right away to get it heated up while I'm preparing my ingredients. So with pressure canning, much like water bath canning, you wanna follow a safe and tested recipe. Canning is not the time to be creative with your recipes. You really wanna make sure you're using safe ingredients and safe amounts so you can preserve your food as long as possible. So once you have your recipe or food prepared in a safe way, you're not deviating from the recipe, right? Right, you're not deviating from the recipe. You're gonna to wanna to do the same very important process. Check your headspace. Do not ignore headspace rules on your recipes, especially during pressure canning. That is necessary for a proper seal and a safe seal. You also want to do the all important step of wiping the rims of your jars to free them of any contaminants, oils, salts, food particles, whatever. You will not get a proper seal unless the rim of your jar is clean. Add on your warmed lid, add on your band to fingertip tightness. Again, don't really crank that down. So once you have your jar completely filled with the lid on, the band on, with the correct tightness, this is where the process starts to differ a little bit. Your canner's already on with the correct amount of water in the bottom of it. You're gonna wanna lift your jars into your canner using your jar lifter, and you're going to want to seal the canner. Pressure canners always have markings on the lid as well as the handles. That's how you lock it in. They will also have these lips and there will be a gasket on the inside of your pressure canner. This creates a very tight seal. From here, what you're gonna do is you leave the vent port or petcock open. 
and you allow your pot to start building some steam. So what you want to do is you want to let this run until you have a steady stream of steam coming out for about 10 minutes. Let that steam for 10 minutes and then carefully, I like to use a pair of kitchen tongs to drop your counterweight on top of your vent pour. This will allow your pot to start building pressure and you'll see that it's building pressure by checking the pressure gauge. The pressure that you'll need will depend on the recipe that you're doing. Your recipe might read something like process for 30 minutes at 10 pounds. So what you wanna do once you have it start building pressure, you'll let your pressure gauge get up to 10 and then you might need to adjust your stove accordingly. You will not start the clock on your processing time until your gauge is up to the correct pressure. So if that recipe says process for 30 minutes at 10 pounds, I won't start my 30 minutes until my gauge is reading 10 pounds. Throughout that processing time, in my example 30 minutes, keep a close eye on your pressure canner. You may need to adjust the heat of your stove up or down to keep the pressure constant. Don't freak out if your pressure drops a little below or goes a little above, especially if you're using a natural gas stove. This is very common, you just need to keep an eye on it. Once you've processed your jars for the correct time with the correct pressure, turn your stove off, turn the heat off, and leave your pressure can alone. Don't touch it, don't remove the weight, don't do anything. Under no circumstances, listen, under no circumstances, do you want to mess with the canner at all while it's cooling down? Don't remove the weight, don't jiggle it around. Absolutely do not quick cool it. Do not put it into cold water. Do not try to quick vent it. Leave it alone. Let it sit and it'll naturally come down to room pressure and you'll know that it's at a safe pressure to open the lid because your safety valve will drop, it'll make an audible click, and your gauge will be reading zero. Then and only then is it safe to remove your counterweight and open your canner. Once you're able to safely open your canner, you're going to lift your jars out with your jar lifter and do the same process as you would with water bath canning. Set them on your counter and leave them alone. Ideally, 24 hours is the best. After 24 hours, remove your bands, check your seals, label your jars, and then store them properly, remembering that you cannot double stack without a thin piece of cardboard or wood in between your jars. Pressure canning has pretty much the same longevity as water bath canning, 18 months according to the ball lids. However, it is agreed upon that properly preserved jars with good seals will last anywhere from 18 to 24 months. There you have it, our crash course in pressure canning. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'd be happy to go over them with you. I'll leave as many links as I can down below for my pressure canner, as well as any extra tools or resources that you may wanna check out. And as always, thank you for spending some time with me today. Until next time.